I've read probably about a month ago, and I love the way that the person said it. It's shameful the number of children that have died in this nation because of coronavirus, because it was preventable. Um, and so that's, that registered and that sat on my heart because so many people are talking about, oh, but children don't get impacted in the same way as adults. True, the majority of children don't have the same experience with coronavirus that adults have had. But if you look deeper at the data, we know that um, you know almost 700 children have died if you look at those in the age group where the vaccine just recently became available, you're talking about anywhere roughly around 170, around 200 have died. If you look at the number of hospitalizations in the age group where the vaccine have just become available, five to 11, you're talking about 8,000 plus um, hospitalizations. If you look at all children who've been impacted, you're talking about almost uh, 2 million positive tests. Um, if you look at the percentage of new cases, children disproportionately represent a percentage of new cases because the coronavirus has fewer people left to infect, okay? So it's preying more on children. So there are about a quarter of new cases in recent data. Um, there are scenarios where children get exposed and then children bring it back to their home. Um, and we know that people in the home of a person who has coronavirus, especially if you live in a crowded, cramped dwelling, are more susceptible to um, actually converting from exposure to infection. So my family, the kids in my life have, who have been eligible have been vaccinated already, okay? And my niece, she's 10, Kaya, she was the last person who hadn't been vaccinated. And she wrote a letter and she said, I wanna write a letter to the world. Um, and she said, I want people who have the opportunity to get vaccinated to please get vaccinated because I don't have that chance. But if I did, I would do it because I lost my papa and I know what it was like to lose my papa. Life isn't the same. We couldn't go to school. We can't play with, I can't play with my friends. She has virtual play dates. And this woman, little woman is like, personality on a thousand, okay? <laughs> and so playing for her is, it looms large. She actually is gonna be airing in the Sesame clip soon. We're just waiting for the air date. Um, and so when Kaya had the opportunity to get vaccinated, she's one of the first children in the state of New Jersey to get vaccinated. She got vaccinated last week and she had the opportunity to get vaccinated. I'm telling you, I cried the night before because I was like, oh my goodness, we are at the point where everybody in my inner circle can be safe, can be as safe as possible. And yes, the science is there. We know that children in that age group have the same, it's called immunobridging, right? So the endpoint of the trials around children um, were different in that we wanted to know if they produce the same antibody levels or antibody response. Does it have the same immunogenicity? that it does in the older age group, and it did. So from that, we can infer from the data that it would have the same level of efficacy. So the studies through that data interpretation said that the efficacy was roughly around 90.7. That's very good. Um, and that there were no, no serious medical events or reverse events and similar side effects that we saw um, for children in other vaccinations and actually less side effects than we saw in the, the um, some of the older age group of adolescents, not older people, but adolescents. Um, and so I felt very comfortable. I felt that the science was, was valid and I felt like it was the right thing to do. So as soon as I got an opportunity, I heard that children could be vaccinated, I said, bring Kaya in. She's going to get vaccinated tomorrow. And she got vaccinated. I put my baby out there on Twitter because I want the world to see. She came dressed in a, a blue navy sparkly dress with like gold glitter on it. She had her hair, you know, flat iron and curls. She, she told her mom, do it up. This is a big event. That 10 year old sensed that. I just, mm. you know, the, the points of frustration during this uh, thing that we're in and it's beyond a pandemic because I feel like it shows up in other areas it's not just the virus mm -hmm, the virus mm -hmm. to me is a symptom of a greater ill that oh, is definitely. affecting society <laughs> yes so it is. I just you know I, I, I which is why I'm not optimistic because it, it's so much deeper than wearing a mask and getting vaccinated it's so much deeper than a pandemic but you know I'm grateful that there are people that we can at least trust I know um, where the heart is and 
you know, for all of the Tuskegee and all, that's not this. Mm -hmm. She's not that. Dr. Kismekia Corbett, not that. You know, like there are uh, so many uh, bright spots to point to, and you've been one of them. So I just want to thank you for always, and even answer my paranoid calls and texts. (laughs) I was like, I ain't trying to, because I wasn't trying to get it, y'all. I really was not trying to get the vaccine, but you, you, you walk me through it and I'm still here and I have no adverse effects and uh, I probably don't need the booster, but I might get it uh, right before my conference in March just to be yeah. safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hope that we can have a place where we can all test freely, you know, like they should, yes. they should be yes. Yes. tests, you know, because that, again, that's everything test. Just let's, let's be yes, able to it has to something. be a part of the strategy. Yeah. And I recommend yeah. it for those who are getting together for the holidays. If you're getting together with family, especially family traveling from multiple different households who are not vaccinated. First of all, I mean, that's a personal decision. And my family, we're not having a holiday celebration without everybody being vaccinated um, because my aunt still is high risk, right? She's 84. Um, but if you are going to have family members do things to lessen the risk, do tests, do rapid antigen test tests. You can test daily so that you can pick up any asymptomatic infection quicker than if you were to do a one stop and done, um, open windows inside. So, so you can clear out the air and filter the air, um, wear masks until you need to take them off. So those are just things that people can do, um, especially if you have someone in your life who's high risk and is not vaccinated or not boosted. Think about um, having a higher level of protection for those persons. 